we're going to finish off the 7.2 notes here uh, with our example number three, going to college, and we're talking about the sampling distribution of a sample proportion. It says a polling organization asks an SRS of 1,500 first-year college students how far away their home is. Suppose that 35% of all first-year students attend college within 50 miles of home. So let's suppose that that's the true actual value of college students, um, well, the percentage of them that are uh, within 50 miles of their home. Find the probability that the random sample, and this should say of 1,500 students, not if, of 1,500 students, will give a result within two percentage points of this true value. So you think about like a political poll, this would be plus minus 2%, like our margin of error. So we've got that the true proportion is actually 35%. What if we do an SRS of 1,500 kids? What's the probability we'll land within two percentage points of that value? Where do we start with a problem like this? And again, this is one of those state plan do conclude ones that we can use uh, just to organize the four-step process we can use to organize this. So let's start with the state step. What exactly do we want to do? Right? Let's be really clear about that. Well, we know the true proportion, the true P is 0.35. They give us that. And we'd like to land within two percentage points of that. So 0.35, if we go plus or minus 0.02, though, that means we'd like to land at most 0.37 and at least 0.33, so somewhere in that interval. So state, what exactly do we want to do? Well, we want to find what's the probability that we get a p hat between 0.37 and 0.33. So instead of writing that whole statement out, it's actually really efficient to just write this probability statement like this. And then the only thing we need to be really clear about is what the heck is p hat? So let's use our context here. So where p hat would be the sample proportion of first-year college students within 50 miles of home. So p hat is the actual proportion that we observe in our sample of the kids that are within 50 miles from home. And the other thing that's really important, we should point out the sample size here. Right? So this is coming from an SRS of 1,500. Because when we use our equations, the sample size is actually um, is used. So it's really important that we verify what the sample size is in this case. And we know the true P, the true population proportion, apparently, is 0.35. So I think this gets the point across. Again, I don't like to write a lot, so I try to write this um, as efficiently as possible. I think we're good on the state step. So for the plan step, so before we can get to our calculations and crunching numbers, we have to meet a couple conditions. And the plan step is where we do that. So the first condition, let's talk about uh, the independence condition. And that's the one that makes sure we don't sample uh, more than 10% of the population, right? So the population is actually very large. If you think about the population of first-year college students, it's a lot larger than 10 times our sample size. So in this case, what is 10 times n? n is the sample size, so if 1,500 is our sample size, the population of first-year college students is much larger than 10 times 1,500, which is 15,000. So we're definitely safe on the independence thing. If we sample without replacement, we're totally fine. So the 10% condition is met. All right, that's great. Uh, what exactly does that do for us? If you remember, that's the one that allows us to use this formula for standard deviation. So the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat would be p, which is 0.35, times 1 minus p over n, and then you take the square root. So the reason we check the independence condition is so we can use this formula for standard deviation, which gives us 
0 0.0123. Uh, and the other condition we use, the normality condition. Um, to do that, we have to do the large counts thing. So we said in P, in this case, N is 1,500. P is 0.35. So in P has to be greater than or equal to 10. Well, 525 is definitely greater than or equal to 10. And we have to check the other way also. So N times 1 minus P. So 1 minus P would be 0.65 which is definitely greater than or equal to 10. In fact, this is just 975. So we're safe on both counts. So we can say the large counts condition is definitely met. So we're good uh, to consider this thing to be approximately normal. So the normality condition is good. So, so far, when we're talking about the sampling distribution of p-hat, we know it's normal, right? So it can, we, can, we can say it follows an approximately normal distribution. Uh, we know the mean. The mean of p-hat is just equal to the true population proportion. In this case, they gave that to us as 0.35. And we know the standard deviation now to be 0 0.0123. We just calculated that in the plane step. So we are ready for the do step. It's time to actually do some stats calculations. Uh, and let's start with drawing that normal curve. So it's approximately normal. Let's give it some labels. We know it's normal. The mean is 0.35. Standard deviation is 0 0.0123. So we can go ahead and mark off the mean here in the middle. There's 0.35. And then let's think about the interval we're interested in. We want to know within two percentage points. So keep in mind this curve is nice and symmetric. We want to go from 0.33 to 0.37. So if we want to represent that probability, we can shade everything between those two boundaries from 0.33 to 0.37. And then so I'm going to keep using red here. The probability that we get a p hat, let's put a little hat on this thing, between 0.33 and 0.37, well, now it's just a normal calculation. So I'm going to use technology in this case. The command normal CDF, the lower bound would definitely be the 0.33 boundary. Therefore, the upper bound would be the 0.37 boundary. And also give the mean and the standard deviation. If you're someone who prefers the z-score table, feel free to do that as well. So this gives us an area of 0.8961. So I might not have drawn it exactly to scale, but whatever. I drew, I, at least I got more than the majority of the area covered. So 0.8961. So we are all good for the do step. Drew a curve, we showed that it was normal, we shaded what we wanted to find, and we gave the calculation statement. So lastly, we just need to conclude our answer, and our answer is really this 0.8961 thing. So let's conclude. If this curve represents all of the p-hats, right, all the possible samples of college kids, that means about 89.61% of all the samples we could take, right, of all the SRSs, we'll give a result within two percentage points of the, of the true population proportion, which was 0.35. And so right now, this statement really lacks context, right? It has all the numbers correct but it really lacks context. So we're talking about the proportion of those first-year college students that still live within 50 miles of where they grew up.
So another way you could say this, uh, if we take an SRS of size 1500 from this population, there's an 89.61% chance that our sample proportion will be between 0.33 and 0.37. All right, so we got to do an example that actually used an interval. And that concludes our discussion for the 7.2 notes. So now we know all about the sampling distributions of sample proportions, or p-hats, and we know the conditions that we need to meet for those. And now we've also got experience doing state, plan, do, conclude. We'll follow that model for the rest of the year. That is all for these notes. I'll see you in class.